today, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna do the Highline Fender Mod. So before we begin, a Highline Fender Mod is going to require you cutting your hood on this line right here. If you're not comfortable cutting your hood, do not attempt this mod. We're also going to be bringing the fenders up to this line here, which is the exact same size as that. So it's about three and a half inches, I think. But the entire fender will be coming up this far along with the inner fender. Now, just like the warning about the cutting the hood, if you're not willing to do a cold air intake or a direct snorkel or a cowl intake, then this mod is not for you. You have to delete the air box. You're also gonna have to come up with a lower profile option for this guy, whether it be move it down the fender some more or something. This has to be changed as well. There's a way to delete the system, but keep the sensors and one tube and a loop so that it still passes the vacuum leak test, whatever, and it sees the pump, whatever. But you eliminate all this other bullshit and it's just like one of these two modules and that can go down there. And the battery will be coming up and interfering with this so this may need to be relocated back further up further battery may need to come this way this will have to get mounted up here so to begin with you're gonna have a 13 here a bunch of 13s down here a couple of 13s in here a bunch of eights in the bottom of the air box some 13s holding the battery plate to the battery structure you'll have a 13 nut here and here and then a bunch of 13 bolts inside the fender well and then a 10 mil holding this vacuum reservoir that's french in place <clears throat> all of this is going to be coming up three inches as well so you may have to change your battery location depends on what battery you're running if you're willing to fabricate this or change this at all some people say you pull this up and lay it flat inside here and it'll i don't know we're going to figure it out together there's also four 13s along the back holding this fender to the firewall. Those have to come out and then you're basically going to lift it up to the next hole and then put the bolts back in and do the same up here. Then figure out where everything fits. Then you do the same thing on the driver's side. You cut your hood. You relocate your upper latch mounts to higher up. Highline fender. Picture insert here. So yeah, I'm going to get back to it. I'm slowly pulling everything off. I've got three more of these guys. I have to get this guy out of the way to get to them. I think the bottom one I can get from the bottom. I don't know. All of this is out, but it's still not budging. So there's clearly some other bolts I'm not seeing. Oh, right there. So three bolts here. So we'll get that off and we'll get back to work. Now with the fender completely separated from the body, you should be able to just, you should be able to, ah, there we go. Now, as you can see, we need to change this somehow. It looks like there's another bolt I need to get, but that needs to come up as well or get repositioned, cut, I don't know. But this guy is essentially going to be lifted from those four holes up to there, which is good because my Jeep isn't very rusty. Like none of these were very rusted at all. There is some rust in the thread. So I will be putting anti-seize on all the threads before I put them back together. But if your Jeep is relatively rusty at all, I would not try this. You're gonna break off every one of these bolts. Just cut your fenders, cut them, cut them up higher remove the inners, put some mesh in there, I don't know, but you're gonna break bolts. Luckily, the only one that broke was the bottom one. That one will not be reused because it will be below the fender itself. This fender will come up to about here. 
and then we'll bolt it back in and we'll start shaping it to fit this up here make this work clear these wires out of the way we may have to cut some of this out of the way and then fix that battery tray so uh yeah on to that now with the battery box completely removed i'm pretty sure if i cut straight down right here all the way around that will be pressed against the firewall like so this will go back to where it was bolted to the fender and everything will be up higher and I can put the box back together the way it was throw that little thingy in there throw the reservoir in there and call it a day so as you can see this does not line up with just using the holes in the fender so those holes need to be widened up taller or another hole drilled right above them so the fender can drop down a little bit you can see here where we're lining up up front it's a little high It'll probably be more like that so yeah a little bit more to do get those holes a little wider I can pull this back off keep messing with it until it's perfect and then I can cut the hood to match because I do not want that to miss a line all right back to work GoPro battery's dying, so back to the phone. I got this line right where I want it. Now I can cut the hood and that will determine where I need to set this up up here so that it lines up properly and I can adjust that tab as needed. Should be able to get some kind of mounting system going there. I'm gonna put the battery box back in and see where that lines up get the other side done and then I can cut the hood and make the fronts line up where I want them. Had to make some adjustments to the bracket for the battery box itself. It tends to hold a lot of weight on the battery and with it just mounted to the fender liner, there was some flexing. So I put these tabs back on the back, but lower. So it'll still mount to the firewall and uh, get that back in. And then we're back to knocking out the driver's side. So it's the next day. I got as much done as I could. The lower bolt on the driver's side was completely stuck and rounded off pretty bad. So I had to have old Rusty put the breaker bar on it, but that's off. I put a piece of tape on the line on the hood and I cut about a half inch below the crease line. That way I would have some lip to fold under. That way it's not just a bare edge like you know, my fenders. Once I rough it up, get all the paint chips off and paint it flat black, it'll look pretty nice. That way you don't cut yourself on this edge here. Took a lot of hammering and um, what is it? A hand, handheld press brake. What's his name on uh, Adam Savage on Tested just talked about one couple of weeks ago which I thought was kind of humorous because he thought he claimed it was his favorite tool and it was so amazing and blah 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 and I just thought it was humorous because I've been using one for quite a while and uh, man I've used one for a million and one things and then I can't find it what the heck hmm well it's here somewhere anyway it looks like a pair of ice grips, but it has big plates instead of teeth. So you can use it like a sheet metal press brake. All right, now I'm really getting pissed off. Where the fuck is this fucking thing at? Are you fucking kidding me? I just had the motherfuckers. No. Ah! Anyway, 
you take these guys and you put them right where you need it to bend and then you just bend the metal over it also helps when you're holding the the edge you've made and it's a little too rounded you can hold this in there almost like a body hammer and hammer against the outer edge with a, a mini sledge or something and this will help you pull that edge back to shape so now I have deleted the charcoal canister for the evap system because on the 99 it sits right here it's taking up a lot of room I also need to take the rest of the evap system and I guess loop the hoses that went to the charcoal canister and then I can tuck that over here I think the washer bottle would have went great right there though I don't know I'm gonna dick around with this a little bit I still need to punch a hole in the firewall so I can do the cowl intake thank you heater fuck it's so quiet now so I gotta punch a hole for that but I need to get this cowl off first. Now that I got the hood finished, I can put that down, take the cowl off, start messing with moving that stuff out of the way and uh, figuring out where all this is gonna go. Also, I don't know how well you can see that, probably better on the other side. I just kind of bent this tab around that normally runs down the strip here and punched another hole. And then I drilled a hole here on the back of the fender itself to attach it to the grill to give it more structural rigidity 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 you know what i mean so i punched a four inch hole right about here right where the uh ground was i kind of butted the left side of the saw right up against there's a seam right here of two uh two pieces of metal overlap and then there's a bracket over here for these wires and i just kind of centered it on that four inch hole and then i took some tubing and i cut the tubing uh long ways i slid it down the side basically and uh you put that up in there and it makes like a gasket so the sheet metal doesn't cut through your intake and then i bought this little setup from o'reilly's this is like 24 bucks 45 degree elbow was uh 12.99 this three inch to two and a half inch adapter was uh, $9.99. And then, and then you can drop this in through here and then you get this positioned right about there, I wanna say. And then this guy will point at the intake. And you take the original intake and we're gonna cut it off until it lines up with that. Connect it back together and we have a cowl intake uh, i want to say what's his name one of the guys from bleep and jeep dirt life he did a test uh stock air box was pumping about 105 degree intake air temp and that was pushing 75 degrees fahrenheit you know 30 degrees colder these engines need all the power they can get so i would like to believe that that much colder air is going to do a lot to help so let me finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like. That is below the level of the shroud. It is connected. And that works. So, battery up higher. I disconnected the computer from the firewall and it's just kind of pushed against the firewall by the battery. If it rattles at all, I'll put some padding behind it so it doesn't. Put the washer bottle here. I stripped this, looped this from the canister, took out this little round guy here. And then I took the hose coming from the rear and connected it to here, which was also going to the canister and this was going to the canister. So I just removed that hose and connected that hose. Reconnected the horn. Everything's pretty much done. And there you go, Highline fenders. Give yourself almost three and a half, three and three quarter inches of clearance without doing a three and a half inch body lift. Oh, got a hole. Nope, it's dirt. No, it's a hole. Oh, anyway. But yeah, without having to touch the body or the suspension, you get almost three inches of clearance in the front. That's quite a lot. I have a two inch lift already. So 
figure. Two inches less than that would be your stock ride height with a high line fender. The hood turned out pretty good. I like it. There's more room now. Just a little bit of a gap there. No biggie. And let me put this back on and then I'm done. So, like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, keep on modding.